<laughs> we know it's a big night for all the ghosts and goblins yeah. out there, but trick-or-treating can, you know, can be a little difficult for those who have allergies this time of year yeah. all year long. Some children can have reactions to candy and even costumes. Uh, there's uh, also holiday asthma risk to consider, believe it or not. Dr. Frank Me George here with more on how to have safe fun when dealing with allergies this Halloween. Doc? Well, you know, Damon and Devin, if you see a child collecting Halloween treats with a teal pumpkin like this one from CVS, you should know that is a signal that the child has allergies. And if you have non-food treats, they would be greatly appreciated. But regardless if you participate in the teal pumpkin project or not, everyone should have allergy awareness on Halloween. It's time for carved pumpkins, costumes, and of course, candy. But if your child has allergies, Halloween can be scary for other reasons. It's very, very important to plan ahead. Dr. Jessica Huey with National Jewish Health says to avoid a reaction in trick-or-treaters who have food allergies, parents should consider packaging an allergy-friendly treat just in case the child can't eat ones that they receive and read the labels. But be aware, some smaller candy packaging may not have ingredients printed. Also, consider a non candy alternative. Many parents are calling it the switch witch or the good witch who comes and leaves can leaves a gift um, in exchange for the child's candy. So it's this nice trade system that can happen after trick-or-treating. Huey says some children can have an allergic reaction to their costume, whether it's latex in a mask, irritating fabrics, or something else they wear. Makeup can be very irritating, and especially if it's on several surfaces of the body, um, you might want to just test it a little bit um, to see how you tolerate it before you go on to use it and apply it. Finally, Huey says asthma sufferers should be aware of triggers, especially in haunted houses and corn mazes. We think about fog machines with those smoke irritants, um, even weeds and outdoor molds. All of those can be triggers. And so, you know, if your child needs to pre-treat with their inhaler prior to going, that's a great time to do that. Now, parents should also remember to bring their child's rescue medications at all times, even when out trick-or-treating, and that includes bringing an EpiPen if your child has a prescription yeah. for one. Yeah, I'm so glad you've given these, uh, this advice out there because I'm someone who suffers from peanut allergies mm -hmm. and have long had that issue. You know, one of the things that being complicated on Halloween night, especially if you're purchasing candy that's in bulk or sur surplus yeah. that doesn't have the wrappers on right. it and you're putting that in, you risk, if, especially if it's peanuts, uh, a child getting sick and those uh, that illness can be pretty severe. Yeah. So please make sure parents, <laughs> yeah. you look at those candy wrappers, inspect your children's candy to make sure it's labeled and that you know what your uh, kid is ingesting. And also those uh, teal pumpkins you brought up, yeah. that's a good idea too because a lot of households, if you're going around tonight, you notice one of those teal pumpkins, they may have extra treats that aren't food or candy based yeah. that may be surprising for students too. So check that out. Really Thanks, great. Thanks, Demond, for sharing. That's yeah. important. Yep. Yeah. It, uh, peanut allergy is tough yeah. on yeah. Halloween night, yep. right? And I mean, it's, it's one of the so most much. common for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. And having yeah. to carry around an EpiPen yeah, yeah. is not nice. Yeah. Not, not, not it's not cute. No, no. Not, not a great costume. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, well, thanks. Doc.